Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. So the new V cores are out, but something's different about it. Stay tuned. All right, coffee sponsor of today is Kai. Kai writes, Harry, you're an original. Thanks for hooking me up with demos. Feeling slightly guilty for subsidizing your caffeine habit as I gave it up myself. But you're a young man. Enjoy. <laughs> All right, Kai. Well, thank you so much. Um, glad I was able to help. Uh, thanks for the brew. Yeah, I kind of need the caffeine. Uh, I actually do dark roast anyway, so it's not as much caffeine. I, it just tastes bolder. Okay. <laughs> if you want to support my coffee habit, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. Thank you in advance. You wanted to hook up the channel and take care of the team? Super thanks is the way. Link is below, and you can contribute as much or as little as you like. All right, thank you guys so much. Okay, so Dan was in the store. You know, my man Dan, the mad scientist Dan, makes his own rackets. When these new V cores walked in, and we looked at them, and looked at them and looked at them some more. We started noticing subtle changes that for most people wouldn't see. Although specs are similar, we're looking at other things though. So I called Dan in because I wanted to take a deeper look into what has changed between the old V-Core 98 and the new V-Core 98. All right, so hang on for Dan. All right, guys, so the mad scientist is here today. Thank you for joining me, Dan. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. You always teach me and the fellas out there, or the people out there, something new about tennis and rackets so here's the thing guys dan walked in right as i got these the new v core 98 100s and 95s he immediately gravitated towards the 98 as we all should because it's racket of the year a couple years ago in this form and we both noticed that something's changed like immediately changed. So Dan started to dive in a little further with the racket and we both compared notes and we were like, the shape is different. There's, I mean, although there's one thing that's different that they say on the specs, which is half a millimeter thicker here, there's more to the new racket that meets the eye. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Okay? So Dan, I'm gonna hand you the new one. Okay. And we're just gonna just state the obvious um, real quick. The only thing that according to specs that they really changed is the beam width. And in the old one, the top number is 22.5 millimeters, which is essentially the head guard part. 22.5. And the no new number is 23 now. So they thickened up this part by half of a millimeter. So if you guys didn't know, in the old 95, they thinned it out by half a millimeter and jacked the racket up. <laughs> so by thickening this up in the new version they actually probably stiffened it up right mm -hmm. so right. it's a constant 23 now until it hits here 
where it thins out to 21. So it thins out right about here into a thinner beam where the flex hits. But Dan and I looked at the racket and you can immediately see shape change. What do you see, guys? Dan, go ahead and explain what happened here. <laughs> yeah, so we were taking a closer uh, look at these rackets and you, you might wanna just come in maybe a little closer with these uh, rackets side by side. And we started to look at um, some of these shapes in here, okay? And so this, this if we put them directly side to side, um, this, this cutout is actually lower on the new racket. This cutout here is higher. The shape of the cutout is different on the old versus new. And then if you look at the angle right here, it's, it's slightly beveled right here. It's slightly beveled. Here, they take a big uh, angle out of the side right here of the, of the new racket. They also change the shape on the inside of the throat. It still has these really cool arrow fins, which I just love, gills, whatever they're called. Um, and then as we went through this section, do you have that, that vernier caliper? <laughs> vernier is a, Pierre Vernier invented this, a famous mathematician. And so we got this gorgeous caliper to start to take some measurements. And I'm going to be very careful here not to scratch this beautiful racket because I'm probably going to buy it. Um, and so when we come in here, we get a measurement here. And then we come up to the old one. And we have like a full, almost millimeter of uh, difference. So they've, they've actually thickened it up a little bit in this section. Okay. They've taken out some material here. They've taken out material here. Uh, and, and we don't know exactly what effect that's going to have. So they're working on this newer racket. Someone has said, let's make it perhaps more flexible in the throat. Let's make it more stable look across the top. And the other thing we noticed with this wider, uh, more square shape across the top, more of an isometric shape, that's going to widen the sweet spot up a little bit in the top and give it, with this thicker beam up here, it's gonna give it more stability when you hit the ball up higher. Mm -hmm. And so we think this racket is gonna have a, a, a different feel, um, a, lo a little more power, and Harry's gonna talk about the swing weight. A little uh, wider sweet yeah, spot too. A little, a little wider and higher sweet spot and, and, and the weight on top. So that's gonna really have a nice feel for the more intermediate advanced player who's hitting harder shots up higher on the racket, especially like on a serve. It's going to give it a lot more uh, solid feel and power uh, hitting hitting further up here. So I'm really, really curious uh, for Harry to string this racket and for me to hit with it. Yeah, no, that's, that's next. <laughs> so Dan, when we look at the rackets like this, with it squared off a little bit more, the sweet spot's going to be a little wider. And then because it's thicker, we're going to gain more power. But you're saying that because they thin this part out this way, that it's going to be more flexible here. You know, I'm not really sure because a part, part of the dimension was thicker, but they also took out material here with this angle and here with this angle, and they changed where this groove uh, comes down here. I can't really tell you what the overall effect of that's going to be. Um, they might have done this uh for for marketing which means that it looks cool mm -hmm. does it actually change the way it feels i don't know but i think that's a lot of um, effort to change their whole mold and frame design um, for this shape and so any change in shape is going to change what it does but i can't tell you the overall effect until i actually go out and, and hit with it but they're shooting for something here and they're they're pretty smart when they design these things um, and so you can see it's just a completely oh, yeah. different shape and feel this is almost a, a box frame with a little groove in it. That's a completely angled out, um, different shape altogether. And so what it's going to feel like, I'm not really sure. It might be, it might be stiffer. It might have more feel, more flex, hard to say, but we'll find out when we string them up. Right. So that's my guess. I mean, you get a wider sweet spot and then a more flex this way. That's my guess. Now, when we messed with the numbers on both of these, we did them with the placards on and the plastic just, just to be, uh, you know, just to be consistent, consistent there. Um, 
The swing weight is what actually surprised us a little bit here. On the old one, it was 313 with the placard on. The new one, 324. So more plow in the new one. Could that be an anomaly, or do you think they did that on purpose? They definitely did that on purpose, because the rackets both weigh an identical uh, 305, and mm -hmm. they both have an identical uh, balance point um, at, th at 322, as I recall. Mm -hmm. and so to change the uh, swing weight, it's where did they put the weight? And so to change the swing weight, they had to put the weight, again, the same balance, too. So mm -hmm. how do they get swing weight that much different with the same balance and the same weight? That's the magic that goes into these rackets. Right. So this new racket is going to have, there's a direct linear correlation between swing weight and power of a racket. The more powerful the racket, uh, the higher the swing weight, the more powerful the racket. And weight isn't as uh, a sensitive a factor to power as, as swing weight. So this racket is going to be noticeably more drive off of this racket. Is it going to have the same control and feel? I don't know. Probably more power for sure. Well, definitely more power. You'll, <laughs> feel, you'll feel that difference. Uh, and that'll be very, very fun to play with. Now, the other thing that we were going for was you had mentioned a bunch of new technology stuff on the back. Like, what's changed? Let's so, take a look at the numbers. You, you know, you can, you can look at all this stuff and get pretty confused real quick. Um, <laughs> the first thing I noticed on the old one is they talk about the string grommets. And they say here that there's a thin grommet nozzle is inserted into a larger frame hole, allowing the string to move together with the grommet for faster snapback. So apparently down in here, uh, the string is able to move down in these lower grommets to give the string bed more snapback. Now on the new one, it's described differently. Here they say they've got a silicone oil infused grommet reduces the friction between the grommet and the, and the string, allowing the, the, it says racket, allowing the string to quickly snap back. So now they're not talking about a small grommet in a big hole. They're just talking about a silicon infused grommet. Now, can I feel there's more silicon in this one than, than this one? Uh, I can't tell. And does it, the grommet really make that much difference in spin? I don't know. So I think that's a little bit of a, a little bit of marketing. I'm not sure, but again, these guys know what they're doing, so I, I don't uh, doubt it. Now here's a whole new section up here that isn't on the old one. They talk about frame structure and shaft design. So here's where they mention, now it's funny because they say, they say here thinner beam. Well, we know that, that this is thicker and this is the same. So I'm not sure why they're talking about a thinner beam and, and with these little arrows, they're, they're think, saying that it's thinner this way than this way. And we're gonna have to get our micrometer out. Um, I don't feel any difference in the thickness here or here, but we can measure that. And they're saying that's going to give it improved feel and control. Hmm. It's interesting. So it's going to make it more maneuverable, stabilized racket with a higher launch angle to increase top spin. Huh. So, you know, you got to kind of read the fine print sometimes to see what they're trying to accomplish with their design. So with it thicker. It's wider here. Yeah. But they're saying it's thinner this way well, and this way. So let's find out. Let's see. Okay, lay them down. Here we go. Here we go. You gotta have a very steady hand. I do not want to scratch these beautiful <laughs> works of art. Okay, so this is the old one. The old one is on top. And now, I don't know if these grommets are different. If the grommets are different, then this go is Go right gonna, down at 12. Be, be yep, there you go. Okay, let's see so where we're at. There's the new one. I feel room. I well, feel room. If, if, and again, I don't know if that's the difference being the, the grommet, uh, but if they're saying that this is thinner, I'm not seeing it here. Let's try this way because that's the other arrow they, they drew. Sorry. That's okay. Let's go here. Okay. Hmm. About the same spot. Give or take. Oh. It's yeah. thicker there. But it's hitting the grommet. Yeah. No, it's not. It's thicker there. You're off the grommet. Yeah, yeah. It's not stopping it. So. Well, yeah. Yeah, so no, it's not stopping. They're saying it's thinner here and here. And maybe if I go before the grommet to find out. 
Yeah, no, it's not. It's yeah. thicker. If anything, it's it's the same or a little thicker. So I'm not sure. Well, no, this way I'm getting a very slight. No, uh, I. If anything, they're about the same. But that's what they're trying to accomplish. With I think, which I think is interesting that they describe that. Now I think we can, you know, really take our time and probably go all the way around here and see if we can find more differences. Um, Dan, yeah. I found something. Wait. Check this out. The indentation oh, yeah. that's here. Yeah. It's different. Oh. It's deeper. On the on the old in the, on the new in one. In the new one. If you, if you put your yeah, finger I in there. I can see it. So if we look at this this indent right here versus this one. Harry thinks this one is That looks the the bottom one looks deeper. Like yeah. you can so feel it actually. So, so that's not going to be a thinner design on the top one it's going to be even thicker if anything so again without completely confusing ourselves uh, it's fascinating when you really take a fine look at a racket and say to yourself is this something uh, I want to upgrade if I've, if I've been thinking about uh, the, the V core you know is this going to be a, a big enough change for me to say wow that's something I really want to try now that they've improved it because that was some of the criticism uh, of, of the older one so again when we string it up we'll um, have some we'll feel the difference. Yeah. yeah. So the what I just found out was that indentation is it's deeper. I can feel it is deeper in this new one. This one is a little more shallower, huh. and feels actually this is wider. This is wider and deeper. Hmm. This is shallower and narrower on the old one. So I guess when they thickened it up here, they they brought this insert deeper so that it still flexes there so they ca kind of compensate it for the thickness yeah by and doing that so so there's some uh, matter scientists than me out there um, <laughs> who's got this stuff figured out and when the players play with these rackets and give them feedback and and they say it needs more of this or less of that they can go into these shapes and fine-tune all of this and i don't know that there's any computer simulation that's going to tell them exactly what it's going to achieve until they actually get real, real world feedback. Mm -hmm. um, but the number of iterations that probably go into these, you know, they probably do a hundred, you know, different. And, and again, we don't know underneath this beautiful paint um, what's happening with the carbon fiber layout. They can also be changing um, the type of carbon fiber and the angles that they put the different sheets to achieve different stiffness. I think that's how they change with the exact same spec. They get a different swing weight exactly. with what's underneath the paint. We have no idea what that is. Unless, of course, I sand it off, which I'm not going to do on these, these beautiful rackets. <laughs> You've done it before. So, okay, so let's take a look at what everybody sees. I mean, everybody sees... So Shapovalov and Kerber is who we see. And then we see Rabakina and Shapovalov now. So I guess somebody's retired. And then this is the Wimbledon winner. So we put her face there because that's what she uses. And then... Let's just take a look at the downright colors on this. Do we like that better? You know, it's uh, it's almost kind of a, a dark a dark dirt they threw in there. Um, I think it's gorgeous. I think this is is beautiful too, and they've just added a little more blue kind of complexity. They, they brought up the blue a little bit up here and here. Um, these beautiful arrow fins, and you've got your your little uh, little divots up in here. Uh, I think it's a gorgeous racket. Looks very Ferrari-ish kind of now. Yeah, it's like, a, <laughs> like an exotic car. Right. Um, but I think to your point, you know, if you just look at the two, you, you're you, you're a customer. You walk in, you pick them up, you look at the specs. They look identical on the specs. Yeah. And a half a millimeter in the top of the hoop. Would you think that was be be meaningful if you're just going to buy a racket? You might not think much about it and think, oh, these are probably the same. So these are dramatically different from what I can see. This isn't um, going to be a minor update. It's going to be something you'll really feel. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, can't wait. Let's see. Okay. All right. We're going to string them up. All right. And then... I'll race you. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Guys, we'll keep going. We'll keep going um, on another video and see, compare the two to see if there is a feel difference now. There definitely should be. There definitely you'll, should you'll, be. You'll feel that. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to thank my man, Dan for hanging out with me today and agreeing to do this video because he has an eye 
for what's changed because he makes his own rackets. He knows what needs to be done to stabilize a racket, to flex a racket, and to balance a racket. So he saw things in the racket immediately. So that's why I appreciate him. Quick story. He was here Saturday and people walked in here and said, Dan, like out of the blue. He's three, from <laughs> three different guys walked in and said, hey, you're that mad scientist guy. I'm like, wow, that's me. That's cool. I could sign autographs. There you go. Thank you. All right. Dan, as always, thank you, Thanks, my man. Buddy. Appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Guys, are you tired of playing against the ball machine? The ball machine always wins, and you're not really getting any interaction with people. How about playing with somebody at your level, or maybe a little bit better than you that can improve your game? There's 27,000 people nationwide waiting for you to play with. It's all at playyourcourt.com. You can find your new tennis friend, join local leagues, all for less than $5 a month. You'll have access to players at your level, your speed, and make some new tennis friends. Check it out at playyourcourt.com forward slash tennis spin. Link is below.